August, 1942. Ten women are lined up across the wall. Betty Zeiss, Anne Colstein, Francis Silva, Lorena Encinas, Dora Barrios, Josefina Josephine Gonzalez, and Juanita Jenny Gonzalez. They were all arrested for suspected involvement in the murder of Jose Gallardo Diaz, which would infamously become the Sleepy Lagoon murder. Only two months prior, Amelia Venegas was arrested in East LA on her way to the grocery store. And to understand the roles these women's arrests had in the revolution of Mexican-American women, we have to hear more than one story. We have to start from one of the most known stories in American history and retell it, World War II. World War II would completely shift the economic and political conditions of American life in the US. This included the life of Mexican-Americans. This new generation of Mexicans were completely different from the initial immigrant wave that came in the 1800s. This new generation included thousands of U.S.-born Mexicans. During the war, many economic cuts were made to add to the war effort, including Order L-224, which mandates a reduction in the use of fabric in the manufacturing of men's suits and all clothing containing wool. While this order may seem irrelevant, this order would be one reason that the week-long Zoot Suit riots would happen between Mexican-Americans and the U.S. sailors. The United States used wartime patriotism and harsh racial discrimination to assimilate their Mexican populations. So much so that even Mexicans themselves started to willingly assimilate to avoid as much racial discrimination as they could. Despite efforts to assimilate, white Americans still looked down upon Mexicans and Mexicans never truly gained middle-class status as a population. The identity of Pachucos was manipulated by American media to be misrepresented as hoodlums, gangsters, and for women, promiscuous. This was perpetrated not only by media such as the LA Times, but by politicians and law enforcement. Pachucos were instantly able to be targeted by their style, which drastically rebelled against American style at the time. Pachucos dressed in the zoot suit. Zoot suits had padded shoulders that tapered down to a narrow waist and wide leg trousers that sharply narrowed down to ankle hugging cuffs. Female pachucas wore the equivalent, but instead of pants, wore skirts and wore heavy makeup and styled their hair pinned back. While the zoot suits were primarily associated with Mexican American youth, the zoot suits crossed into Filipino and black culture. While male pachucos were immediately targeted by police, female pachucas initially had a different experience. It was not until the summer of 1942, months after the arrest of Emilia Venegas and the Sleepy Lagoon trial, that Los Angeles Police Department began to consider Pachucas as a threat to society. Up until then, Pachucas were merely ignored by the LAPD. The mere appearance of Pachucas automatically created a politicized identity to both Americans and Mexicans themselves because it separated Pachucas from the social norms. Pachucas were the opposite of what American women were at the time. American women embraced being docile, feminine, with rosy cheeks, blonde hair, and long skirts. Pachucas embraced their sexuality, often went out with pachucos to go dancing, wore dark lipstick, and defied the traditional roles of the meek Catholic woman. Pachucas, enjoying leisure time with their male counterparts, was seen as unpatriotic because they were not working towards the collective war effort. Pachucas fought against the discrimination and police brutality that Mexicans faced. The new Pachucas politicized identity was for survival. When Emilia Venegas was arrested, she herself was a Pachuca. While the Los Angeles Times wrote an article that framed her arrest as a protection of patriotism and safety, it really wasn't. She was caught with brass knuckles because she went to stop a group of police officers from harassing a group of young suit suitors. When the officers grew frustrated with her challenging their authority, they searched her bag and found a pair of brass knuckles. Brass knuckles that she had because of the increasing police brutality between LAPD and Pachucos. They released a mugshot of her snarling, looking upset. They did this to further make Pachucas seem like a threat to American society. The liberation of Mexican-American women within the Zoot Suit Riots is a story that is not told often. Pachucas were fighting against not only assimilation into American society, but also the traditional Mexican Catholic route that many were raised in.